Good morning, my Tubies and my Teletubbies. It's Sheila True Love here with you this fine Wednesday morning. Today is November 30th. And today, uh, for your empowerment and your power thoughts for the day, uh, I'm going to take it to maybe a different level at this point because I had posted a video this morning feeling amazing, 2 o'clock in the morning. <clears throat> you know, sometime you have insomnia. And you know how it can be. And I posted this video. It's entitled Freedom and Peace is the Best Thing in the World. And I went into detail how wonderful I feel being single because I've experienced marriage 2.5 times. <clears throat> the 5.5 is I was engaged to be married, but I chose not to. And then I have this person who says because... I chose to get a divorce. You know, I was going against the Bible. Here it is, this person. I'm going to read it to you. It says, sister, this is from some James McGee, always a man, of course. Uh, I'll, I'll pray for this person because he's foolish, very foolish. He says, sister, you chose those men to marry. God didn't create mankind to be single. He created woman and man to be fruitful and multiply. First of all, when God said, be fruitful and multiply, he said that to Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve were two perfect people. The two people that God joined together in marriage, keep in mind again, these were two perfect people. Okay. <clears throat> and he says, for, to, for you didn't, what does he say? For to say you didn't feel mentally or physically it's not true. I don't know what he's talking about. Stupid. He needs to read his stuff before he posts it. It's obvious you didn't have God in your marriage. If God was there, you still would be married to your first husband. I bet you was the one to file for divorce in both your marriages. You broke your union up. You didn't want to honor your vows. You took your vows you took before God. You not happy don't no one like being alone. Stop lying to yourself. Oh, shut the hell up, honey. Being single does not mean being alone, first of all. Get that right. That's the purpose of friends and family, okay? And when it comes to, it's obvious you didn't have God in your life. Are you kidding me? A man knows that he couldn't be with Sheila True Love unless he was willing to study the Bible, have Bible studies, and go to Christian meetings, my second husband was on the platform giving Bible readings, Bible talks, because these men knew that in order to, uh, please, there's no way I would deal with a man who is on Satan's team. When I met these men, they portrayed themselves to be one way. I think we all know about people who wear masks, okay? So we need to get that point clear. And the man, the men that I married, I didn't marry what they became. And people change, honey, and it's not always for the better. And I also, the Bible makes it very clear that there are two grounds for divorce. And the first ground is adultery. Adultery equals divorce. Let me get that scripture for you. Yeah, it's here at Matthew chapter 5, verse 20, 32. Matthew 5, 32, where it says, And I say to you, whoever divorces his wife, except, here we go, except for sexual immorality and marries another, commits adultery. So you see, grounds for divorce is any type of sexual immorality. And let's, let's, let's look at what Jesus said about adultery in the Bible. At Matthew chapter 5, verse 27 through 28. And Jesus says, But I tell you that anyone who gazes at a woman to lust after her has committed adultery with her already in his heart. So that's a form of sexual immorality. A man who's constantly watching porno, lusting after another woman other than his wife, that's also another form of adultery, you know? And the Bible also speaks of abandonment for, as grounds for divorce. 
Now here I Googled it. It says, what does the Bible say about marital abandonment? It says, the Lord absolves the believer. He gives them the responsibility to maintain the marriage when there is to uh, absorb to, to get rid of the marriage when there is desertion by a marriage partner. Desertion mean abandonment. It says here, Paul points out, the apostle Paul points out that the believer is no longer bound or a slave of the marriage covenant in these circumstances when someone abandons you. And we know there's more than one way for a person to abandon you. You have several people who once they get married, they no longer want to have sex. That's abandonment, a form of it. You know, they no longer want to uh, exercise their husbandly or wifely duties. Because you have a lot of people who are very shady and very sneaky and underhanded. They wait until they get you married and now you're trapped and now they stop having sex with you. So what are you going to do? Remember, you have your vows. And another thing, keep in mind, like I keep telling people and I'm going to keep on saying this because you have many people in this world who are very slow mentally when it comes to learning. You didn't make a vow to God. You made a vow before God. You didn't break no vow to God. What is a vow? I love research. A vow is nothing more than a promise. And you know, in some instances, promises are made to be broken based on the situation and the circumstances. Now, I want to read this scripture since people want to come at me from a biblical angle. Okay, let's not cherry pick the scriptures. Let's focus on this. At Proverbs chapter 27, verse 11, and all throughout the Proverbs, and several places in the Bible, you will hear this scripture many times. Be wise, my child, and make my heart rejoice. Bring my heart joy. Then I will be able to answer my critics. Or it says, then I can answer anyone who treats me with contempt. I'm reading it from different versions. Be wise, my son. And bring joy to my heart so that I can answer him who taunts me. Now, do you think it's being wise? Or are you listening to the Bible when it's telling you to be wise? For you to stay with someone who's going to cheat on you? Someone who's going to jeopardize your life, play Russian roulette with your health? Giving you STDs? And you're supposed to think about, oh, I made a vow. No, God broke you from that vow, honey. The moment this person stuck their eggplant in someone else, that marriage is over, okay? That's adultery all the way. And no one is, 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 is mandated to stay in a marriage like that. Now, if you choose to do that, that's your decision. It's a foolish decision, but it's your decision. Because this person had no problem cutting your throat, stabbing you in your back with betrayal, and you're supposed to stay stuck in that situation. Or if you are in an abusive relationship and someone is abusing you mentally, emotionally, this causes stress. Okay? That causes stress. And I think we are wise enough, or at least we should be, wise enough to know that stress kills. Stress causes heart attacks and strokes. Now, again, please, Proverbs chapter 27, verse 11. Be wise, my child. So you see, you're not listening to the scriptures. And you have to also understand, when I got married, we I didn't take traditional vows. You have a lot of people, I don't know if you've been to weddings, where people exchange vows that they have written out to each other. Everyone has not made the same vows. And in all of my vows, I never vowed. Ever, because thank Jehovah, I was wise enough. I never vowed for better or for worse. Because you see, when things get worse, I'm out. Deuces. I'm not going to sit here and throw my God-given beautiful life away, rotting away, aging away with some man who treats me like garbage. He treats me like trash. 
That also goes under the grounds of being submissive. You know, if a man don't fit the description of what a husband is supposed to be like, you know, love your wife like Christ loved the church. They don't fit that description. Jesus Christ have never asked his wife, any woman or the church to get down and have oral sex, suck on me and all of this. He never, ever asked, spoke to the church saying, shut up. You got a big mouth. Shut up. You get on my nerve. You know, Jesus Christ never treated the church that way. And if you're with a man who's supposed to be your husband, honey, please. If he's not loving you the way Jesus Christ loved the church, then he doesn't fit the description for you to be submissive to that. Now, you have a lot of these women who want to bring up this vow, 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 because they're trying so desperately to hang on to a man. What else is new? Anyway, so they could say, am I worth something now? Do I have value? They think that's a flex getting married. They think that's an accomplishment. Of course you have value. Don't be a silly woman. Don't be silly. Your value is based on what is your relationship like with your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and your Heavenly Father, Jehovah. There's your value. There's your worth. What about setting goals and you accomplish them? Again, there's your value. There's your worth. You don't need no imperfect man to validate you, to make you feel like you have some value or some worth. And another thing that women have got to understand, being single, and I'm going to say this again, for those in the back who haven't, didn't hear me, being single does not be being alone. I'm sure you have many people who love you and appreciate you and treat you with value. And women have got to learn that. They really do. Oh, this was a huge topic today. So for that person who made that comment, I suggest you ask questions first. Make sure that you've done your research and then you come at Sheila True Love. Don't come at me, baby. Don't come at me. You'll be sorry. I promise you that. I'm a girl who loves research. I live for it. And now we're going to move on to our power thoughts. I mean, well, that was our power thought. And I hope that has did empower many women out here who feel like they're stuck based on some promise that they made to a man, not to God, to a man. Yeah, you have scriptural grounds for a divorce. If he's cheating on you, and if he abandons you, any type of sexual, any type of sexual immorality, it frees you from your prison. Because that's what marriage have become these days. It's a prison. Incarceration. And like I said again, when God designed marriage and he put the first couple together, Adam and Eve were perfect. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, since of course we want to speak about the Bible, 1 Corinthians chapter 7 says, if you get married, you'll do okay. But if you stay single, you'll do even better. How about that? Who doesn't want to do better? You can keep your okay. I'll take the better. Anyway, we're going to move on for our Bible uh, trivia questions for today. This was kind of a long one. Um, you know how we do. I read the uh, short story and then I ask you two questions. Hopefully this will help you with your listening skills and will benefit you. Okay, we are up to day eight. Noah lives in the ark, and this is coming from Genesis chapter 7, verse 6, through chapter 8, verse 19. Noah was 600 years old when the rain started. Rain fell for 40 days and 40 nights. It rained like windows in the sky were opened. It was like the windows in the sky were open, but the window in the ark was closed. Noah was safe inside and could not see out. 
One day, Noah sent out a dove. The dove came back with an olive leaf. So Noah knew the earth was drying out at last. Bring your family and all the animals out, God called. Gladly, Noah came out. He had lived in the ark for over a year. Wow, because it took time for everything to dry up. Now, your first question, how did Noah know he could leave the ark? Your second question, how long did Noah live in the ark? Those are good questions. How good were you listening? How well were you listening? Anyway, my darlings, I love you. Don't forget Jehovah God loves you and Jesus Christ loves you amazingly and abundantly. It's a Wednesday morning. Like I said, it's going to be an amazing day. I want you to um, think positive thoughts. And another thing, if you don't know the answers to questions that I ask, you could always go back and play it back. Or I, I highly recommend that you do your own research. Always, please do your research. Don't let anybody give you their interpretation of anything indoctrinating you brainwashing you to their way of thinking. No, we want the Holy Spirit's way of thinking. So with that, I'm going to say I love you so much. Have a terrific day. Until tomorrow, if Jesus Christ and Jehovah is willing, I will see you then.